Oh, right into it, huh? Man, I wasn't ready. Let's go. Uh, obviously excited to, to add another piece to the defense. Um, you know, obviously through the evaluation process, we spent a lot of time with Will. I uh, had him in the building, uh, got to know him obviously as a young man and, and what sort he brought to the table from that point of view. So uh, very excited to just add another uh, another element to the, to the defense. And uh, he's done a really good job uh, so far just working, again, asking him to play some techniques or uh, some positions maybe that he hasn't done in a year or two and just trying to get him kind of up to speed on that. So it's been really good. Yes. You said well, me or D'Amico. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. Right now, like we're just going through this process in the spring. Uh, you know, I'm handling it right now, but obviously we'll kind of let you know after the first game. How's that? You going to stop asking? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, obviously right now we're working through that process from the off season. Um, again, I just keep reiterating, like it's invaluable for me to have him around and, and uh, it's been really collaborative. Again, just uh, having sort of been in similar schemes, but kind of bringing them together. Um, obviously out there, like, I don't know, you guys were out there a little bit today, like just being able to kind of lean on him for me too, like just, you know, in between periods, style up to him and, and talk to him about what he saw or some things that I saw or things I'd like to change. So it's it's been it's been awesome for me to have that uh, resource as, as we go through this sort of installation and sort of growth period here. So, um, man, it's been cool. Just, again, I, I didn't have a lot of personal history with, with D'Amico, so just, like, building that relationship as we've gone through this and obviously spending some long hours in the, in the office trying to get up to speed. It's been really cool. So uh, I've really enjoyed it. It's been a collaborative process so far, so hopefully uh, we just kind of keep that going. You've got a chance to, um, got a chance to watch Derek Singley Jr. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I mean, I haven't. And, you know, I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't really look at the weight stuff much right now. I mean, a lot of those guys are, you know, heavy or fluctuating or working in it. That's part of what this offseason program is. Uh, Sting's been able to do everything we've asked him to do. Um, again, another sort of position where we're playing some different coverages and some different techniques than he played last year. And he's been, he's been good fitting into that stuff. So um, now I'm happy where he is, where he's been working. Oh yeah. Hopefully they keep paying attention. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. So again, we're, we're going to base out of a four down front. Um, and I would just say, if you wanted to like do the whole pick one word, it'd be attack. Um, you know, we play our defensive line, uh, in a penetrating style, um, try to edge them up, play nine techniques, those sort of things to cause disruption. So our goal is to be able to affect plays with our front um, by the, the style of they play, the attack mode that they play in and penetrate and disruption, and reset the line of scrimmage and those sort of things. So I would say if you just wanted to like bottle it up, that would be like uh, the main thing. And again, the more that you can pressure a quarterback with four and not have to commit other resources to doing that, that helps kind of protect your coverage a little bit. You know, so you can play multiple coverages and change that element up. You know, if you can affect the, the the quarterback in the offense with your front, so that's kind of the the general approach and philosophy that I'd say we're taking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, to, to uh, you know, I think obviously both those guys, and I would just say in general in the league, you know, I think there's a, a trend towards more multidimensional players because they're going to be put in different spots and because offenses have running backs that can do a lot of different things and tight ends that can flex out and, and do all sorts of stuff. So to have the ability to have some safeties that can uh, match up with those different type of body types or different type of weapons on offense, um, and then from a – I guess like a disguise standpoint where we don't have to flip certain guys or match corners over or do some of those things that if, if this progresses that we can kind of keep those guys if we feel comfortable enough with say Jimmy and, and Jalen and guys like that being able to just sort of match up whatever comes to their side that's a that's a, a nice piece for us because we can start just sort of 
hopefully using our, our, our looks all sort of stay the same. We're not giving away certain things by having guys travel. So, um, you know, again, those guys are working through everything we're asking them to do. It's been been great. That's a good room. and uh, But, yeah, that'll be a, hopefully a nice piece for us. Yeah, uh, I don't know, whatever superlative you want. I mean, great. Yeah, no, I'm literally, I'm saying he's great. I mean, he's just, uh, you know, uh, doesn't say much, like, in the in the meeting rooms and stuff from, like, that point of view, but, man, is, like, super uh, communicative on the field. And um, I would just say, you know, he, you know, D'Amico has a team meeting uh, pretty much every morning, kind of recapping some of the stuff that happened uh, from the day before. And I would say Jalen's sort of finishing an effort uh, shows up on that tape probably as much as anybody. I'm not going to discount anybody else, but um, just the way he approaches, like finishing every play in practice, like being in a good football position, you know, again, as a deep safety, sometimes runs in practice kind of squirt through. We, we, you know, we want our offensive guys finishing downfield, but Jalen's always there, like getting to a hip, finishing a good position. Like, so just to see him train those habits consistently like that is just really cool. I mean, I think that's what, you know, you guys saw obviously on the field last year of just like the, the fruits of those labors. Like he practices with intent um, and he's very deliberate in everything he does. So I think that's what kind of translates. You mentioned that, that sting where you, you, mentioned that sting where you just can work through a lot of multiple coverages. Mm -hmm. What about his play allows you to do other things with the rest of the defense? How does he equip you? Yeah, I mean, he's just obviously, uh, I mean, hopefully, he, you know, he's a – a corner that we feel good about and whatever coverage matchups that we get to, uh, you know, again, whatever that, whether we get to points where we feel good about isolating him or not, like that's obviously stuff down the road that we'll get to right now. We're just kind of playing our base techniques and trying to get him right. So we haven't really got into matching guys or flipping dudes or any of that type of thing. So, you know, hopefully, you know, again, we're just asking Sting to keep progressing and getting better at what we're asking him to do right now. And then I think those types of decisions are more made as we get closer to, to things. Oh yeah, I mean I think uh, very good. I mean it's, he's been great in that room with all, again with a guy like Jalen, obviously working with him. Oh, it's okay. It's a fine. That's, no, that's okay. I forgive you. Um, okay, cool. <laughs> Um, you know, like like I said, like working with Jalen and like kind of helping that growth along the whole the whole back end. It's it's great. I mean, obviously, you know, just a lot of the guys or some of the guys that we targeted to bring in from Jimmy and you know some of the guys in D line that have a history in the system and familiarity. Like it just helps almost like just keep the messaging going. Obviously in the locker room and those sort of things. And Jimmy Jimmy's been great, and he lo he looks like he's about 25 right now out there. So that's been cool too. Last one. Couple. It is. Oh man, that's it. Isn't Bobby coming in here next? <laughs> well, I'm saying from well, I'll, I'll, I will. I, thank you. I am. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll tell you one story. Honestly, um, we uh, we did a two minute drive at the end um, at the end of practice sometime last week, and uh, he threw into a kind of a coverage we hadn't shown. It was the first day we put the coverage in, and he threw in. Um, kind of probably wasn't a throw he, he probably wanted back. I'll just say it that way. Um, but the first thing he did when I was walking off the field, he grabbed me. He said, yeah, he literally, Coach Burke. And he spent about 10 minutes walking in off the field asking me about the coverage and just sort of what he saw and, and how, we, how we kind of set it up and, and talk through that. So I think just, again, his, his deliberateness and intent to try to get better. And, like, he's literally grabbing everybody he can in the field. Um, I actually, I love, like, all those guys, Davis and, and Case and those guys, like I – like during stretch lines, I kind of go hang out and talk to them a little bit about some of the stuff we're doing in the periods and just try to get that back and forth. And um, so he, he's been very sort of intentful of like intentional of learning and just learning defense too. like, hey, what do you call there? What was that coverage or what did you do here? So uh, I respect that from him. Yeah, I would say, um, man, okay. Uh, I would say probably, you know, he's he's a very, like, um, sort of, like, specific to big. So in phase one, um, we actually started phase one with a lot of um, almost individualized. We took every player and said, hey, how can – this is what you can improve just as an individual, a technique or something in your game that you can improve to work on through this first phase. And then when we got into sort of the second half of that in phase two, it was very much like 
uh, techniques. Like it was, we didn't really even get to the big picture coverage stuff. We were like, everyone's going to learn this technique. This guy, then we're going to learn this technique. We're going to kind of do these drills. And so we went from like very specific to like kind of group settings to now like obviously team settings and putting it all together where like hopefully the foundation of like you're playing this technique in this coverage. So it's not necessarily knowing the whole coverage. I mean, they, they do know the whole coverage, but like you've learned it from this technique up essentially. So you kind of always have that foundation. So he's really good. He's, uh, it's been cool. Like he's done a really good job of like wanting to build a foundational aspect to what we do and understand the whys and sort of the intricacies. And we had that time coming through phase one and phase two to now it's like, all right, we're all together. We're calling the whole coverage, but within it, those elements, that technique you've practiced since day one. And we talked about that technique and you're doing this and here's how it all meshes together. So we kind of went from specific to sort of big picture and it's been a cool like process, I think for those guys to, to go through. Right. Thanks, cool. Sure guys. All right. Thank you.